afternoon. Yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Y'all remember me from summer orientation? Yes. Good, good. So for those of you all who I may not have had the opportunity to meet during summer orientation, my name is Tabitha Enoch. I use she, her pronouns. I am delighted to always be one of the first faces to say welcome back to the University of Virginia. I am one of the associate deans of students here. And also the most important role that I carry is the university's hype girl, right? You remember that? Good, good. So hopefully by now, I'm sure that most of you all are sort of continued to move in, feeling a little bit settled, and likely feeling many of the mixed emotions that come with dropping your son or daughter off to college. The point of this address is to let you know that you still made the right choice, right? Like the University of Virginia is still the right choice, no matter how hot it is, no matter how many trips to Target, I think you're gonna probably have to continue to make, this is the place to be. We also wanna introduce you to our university's president. We want you to know also that this is a, there's a small army of people here, some of them assembled down here in this orchestra pit, who are already poised to be a shoulder for you, a listening ear, and a resource for you and your student throughout their time here. As I said to you over the summer, we are so grateful that you've entrusted us with educating your child. And we are so thrilled that you've chosen to be a part of the Uni University of Virginia's family. Okay, so let me get to work. I just have a couple of things and then I'm gonna get out of the way. A Couple of pieces of housekeeping things I wanna share with you, which is there are some folks um, zooming in. So I wanna give a shout out, wave. I don't know where the camera is right there. Like to the folks who are watching on Zoom. So know that anything that's happening in the auditorium, you can participate in as well. A little bit about the order of the program today. After the president offers his comments, he's gonna open it up for questions and answers. And then you can text your questions to this phone number. So my good colleague, Alex Hall, is somewhere around here. She's back there. She's going to be taking all of those questions there. Please be sure to text your questions if you're on Zoom. We're going to put this number in the chat so that you can text those questions that you might have for the president as well. He'll answer those questions after his remarks, and maybe some of the folks down here may also get a question or two. Um, and so just know that that is the, the order of the day. We're gonna to try to get to as many questions as we possibly can in our time together, but no, we probably won't be able to get to all of them. Okay, so with that, let me tell you a little bit about my friend, Jim Ryan. Many of you know that President Ryan has had an accomplished career and is a well-known, respected legal scholar and educator. He's a Yale alumnus. He took his degree from the university's law school in 1992. In 1998, President Ryan joined the law school's faculty after clerking for then United States Chief Justice William Rehnquist. After leaving UVA, he moved to Boston, where he served as the dean of Harvard's Graduate School of Education and was the Charles William Elliott Professor of Education. As you can imagine, in his career, he's had a ton of awards, impressive awards, a lot of accolades that I could list and go on and on about those awards. But the two most notable ones that I always like to highlight is that he was nominated and won as, was selected as the outstanding faculty um, for the State Council for the Higher Education in Virginia. So he won that award. He was also the recipient of the All Universities Teaching Award from Harvard, which in my mind, both of those awards speak to his commitment as an educator. Yet what I think he would call his crowning achievement is that he's a dedicated spouse and the father of four. Right, four, right? That's, that's a lot. I got one, I can't even handle him. He's got four. President Ryan is known for the care and attention he offers his family and our students. I said this last year and I will say it again because it really does ring true for me about him, which is he's got this uncanny ability that when you're talking to him, he makes you feel like you were the only person in the room. It really is as if that singular interaction you're having with him is all that matters. I guess the best way that I like to put it is he really wants to make sure that people know that he is accessible, that we as a university, is, we are an accessible place. 
He wants everybody at the university to feel that they belong. So if you follow him on Instagram, you know that he is an avid runner. He is so much of an athlete that he's running a triathlon on Sunday. And so in true hype girl fashion, can y'all help me hype him up for that event? Everyone, put your hands together for your president, our president, Mr. Jim Ryan! All right, Tab is always an impossible act to follow. Um, thank you for the introduction, um, and good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, seeing so many of you here is just proof that people will do almost anything to get into air conditioning, even come listen to a speech from the president. Um, I want to welcome all of you to UVA and to the parents um, who are here. Congratulations on your child's enrollment at one of the finest universities in the world. Not that I'm biased or anything, but I think you and your children have made an extremely wise choice. I also know how fortunate we are that you have all chosen UVA, and you have my sincere gratitude for making that choice. Welcoming our students is a university-wide effort, an all-hands-on-deck sort of effort, as you might imagine. And I'd like to thank everyone across grounds for helping to make move-in as smooth as possible and for planning and organizing events like this one. I'd also like to thank many of my colleagues um, who are in the orchestra pit. Um, and if you knew how hard they all worked, um, you would give them a huge round of applause, which is a hint. So to the students who are here, um, I will have much to say to you on Sunday night, but for now I'd like to talk to your folks for a little bit. And like all of those in the audience who are parents, um, I know what it's like to drop a child off for the first time at college. As Tab mentioned, my wife Katie and I have four kids. The three oldest have all graduated from college and the fourth is going into her senior year of high school, which means we've been through the first time drop off three times with our sons, Will, Sam, and Ben, and we have a final college move in coming up next year for our daughter, Phoebe, which I have to say I'm already dreading. If you're anything like me, my guess is that you're feeling a swirl of emotions, excitement, sadness, hope, some anxiety, pride, and perhaps some bewilderment, as in how did my son or daughter get this old? Or more to the point, how did I? Given that we share this experience, I thought I'd talk a little bit this afternoon, first as, pres first as a parent and then as a president. Or put differently, I'd like to speak with you as someone who has both paid tuition and spent tuition. And I'll end by asking for your help. As a parent, when I dropped off each of our sons at college, I hoped first and foremost that they would be safe and make smart decisions. College, I think, is a time to experiment, to take risks, to fail, and to try again. I hope that my kids would take reasonable and responsible risks and make good decisions about their health and safety, about alcohol, about how to spend their time, and about their relationships. I hope my kids would engage in the life of the university inside the classroom and outside of it, and that they would get to know some professors. Relatedly, I hope my kids would have the curiosity and courage to build bridges. College campuses today, including the grounds at the University of Virginia, are remarkably diverse communities, indeed among the most diverse in the country. My hope was that my kids would take advantage of the diversity around them and develop relationships and friendships with fellow students whose lives and experiences had been very different from their own. I also hope that this might sound odd, but it's true. I hoped my kids would be uncomfortable at times and that they would wrestle with new ideas or ideas they disagreed with because I believe that this is one of the best ways to learn and grow. Clark Kerr, who was the legendary president of the University of California in the 1950s and 1960s, once said that a university doesn't exist to make ideas safe for students. 
It exists to make students safe for ideas. I believe that to be true, and I also believe that college is a perfect opportunity to confront ideas that are different, perhaps radically so, from your own. And in confronting ideas with which they disagreed, I hope my kids would learn to become generous listeners. Public conversations today are too often strident and lack empathy or understanding. They often seem like a game of gotcha or a quick exercise in picking sides. I hope that my kids would try to understand first and argue second, or to quote Walt Whitman via Ted Lasso, that they would be curious, not judgmental. I also hope that they would recognize that it's possible to disagree with someone even strongly with both civility and respect. Lastly, I hope that they would find their passion and sense of purpose, something that they absolutely love to do or find super compelling or both. So that's what I hope for my own kids. And you might be wondering, well, that's great, but why are you telling me this? The answer is that what I hope for my own kids as a parent is exactly what I hope for your kids as a president. I've said this before, and I will say it again. When I see our students, I can't help but see my own kids. And I want nothing less for our students than I did and do for my own kids. But beyond just hoping for these things, here at UVA, we are trying our best to create an opportunity where these hopes can be realized. So first and foremost, we will always work as hard as we can to make sure that your children are safe and healthy and to help them make smart decisions. It has been a challenging few years in this regard with COVID, the tragic shooting on grounds last year and an uptick in gun violence in the Charlottesville area over the last year or so. We can't eliminate all risk, obviously, but we are as determined as ever to do everything we can to keep our students and our community safe. To give just a few examples, we have a safe ride service to help students travel safely at night, and we have increased the number of police patrols and UVA ambassadors, the folks you've seen around grounds in yellow shirts. We have an alert system for email and text notifications during emergencies. Students can sign up for this, and they can also sign up parents as well. And we have a personal safety app called Rave Guardian where students can be connected immediately by phone with the help that they need. I say all of this not to alarm you, but hopefully to give you some comfort that we take your child's safety and well-being extremely seriously. Now, having a safe environment is crucial, but it's not enough. Our aim is to create with our students the most vibrant student experience in higher education to create an environment that is both supportive and challenging, an environment that is remarkably diverse across every imaginable dimension, and an environment where students will be able to connect not just with one another, but with faculty as well. This year's class is among our most diverse in history. Students come from all over Virginia, from all over the country, and from all over the globe. We have more programs than ever before that are designed to bring students together, and we will continue to enable and encourage students to reach out beyond the familiar and to strike up friendships with students who come from very different backgrounds than their own. Relatedly, we will offer plenty of opportunities for our students to confront ideas that are new and ideas with which they disagree. Universities, in essence, are about the search for truth part of which requires a constant testing of conventional wisdom and accepted truths. This is why free expression and academic freedom are the foundations of universities. But confronting new ideas, as I mentioned earlier, is also critical for learning and for growth. One great way to sharpen your own thinking is to wrestle with ideas and views with which you disagree. We will also give students plenty of opportunities to, to discover their passion and their sense of purpose. We do this by offering a remarkable variety of courses and extracurricular activities, and by offering our students an incomparable array of opportunities for self-governance. We think it's important to give our students the responsibilities of self-governance, and for that experience to be real, and for that reason sometimes hard, because it's part of our goal to prepare students for a life of leadership. We recognize that students are young adults, but they are adults nonetheless. 
And we treat them that way by allowing them meaningful opportunities to govern themselves and by insisting that they follow an honor code that prohibits, quite simply, lying, cheating, or stealing. For parents in the audience who are also alums, I bet that they would tell you that the honor code and the community of trust it fostered were defining features and lasting features of their time here, and I hope and expect it will be true of our entering students as well. Last and relatedly, we will offer students plenty of chances to serve others, whether within UVA or in the broader Charlottesville community. When Thomas Jefferson founded the University of Virginia, the original mission was to prepare citizen leaders for what was then a very young democracy. Our mission has expanded, but the thread of preparing citizen leaders and serving others continues to weave through pretty much all of what we do. My hope for your children, for our students, is that they come to appreciate that whatever else they do, regardless of their chosen profession, whether in the public or private sphere, whether in medicine, government, business, architecture, the military, law, you name it. Whatever else they do, they realize that spending at least some time advancing the common good by serving others is a recipe for a meaningful and rewarding life. So now you may be asking, or I hope you are asking, how can we help? Well, I'm glad you asked. First, you already have helped by raising outstanding kids and by entrusting them to us. And I promise that we will work every day to earn that trust. Beyond that, there are a few ways that you can help. First, please help your children make smart decisions. And to give a concrete example, I'd ask you to encourage them to avoid the off-grounds block party on Saturday night and instead to attend the on-grounds concert at the JPJ Arena and the follow-up event at the Aquatics and Fitness Center, which will include free food, games, music, and more. That would be a smart decision. I also hope that you will assure your children that college will be fun, but it will not always be easy, especially at the beginning. I've come to think that starting college is a little like early parenting. When my wife Katie and I were expecting our first child, everyone told us how magical parenting is and how we would love every minute of it. Then along came our first child. And the first few months, to me at least, were not exactly magical. They felt a little grueling. And yet I carried around this dark secret that I was the only new parent who didn't find it magical. Of course, the magic eventually kicked in a couple of months ago. <laughs> and when parenting did become magical, I forgot about the early months, which were genuinely hard. But so it is with college. Those of us who loved college often tell those who are about to begin that they will love it too. And what we forget is that most, if not all of us, had some struggles at the beginning. It's a lot to get used to. For most students, it's their first time living away from home. I remember my son saying when he started college that it was odd to sleep in one place and to eat in another. I don't know about your kids, but their bedroom and our kitchen were not in different buildings. All of which is to say, please lend an ear if your children are having a rough patch or two and assure them that this is completely normal and that if they leave themselves open to it, they will eventually see and feel the magic of this place. And the magic of this place is that there is a place for everyone. They should also know and be reminded that asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. Finally, I hope you encourage your kids to get to know faculty who I can assure you are interested in meeting and getting to know students. I also hope you'll encourage your children to take chances and to risk failure and to continually search for things they love to do or to learn about. And it's here where my hopes as a parent and as a president converge and where I will end my remarks. There's an old folk saying, the origins of which are obscure, but it goes like this. Prepare the child for the road, not the road for the child. As a parent, I've tried to live by that maxim, though it's not always easy. As a president, I view our ultimate task as helping to prepare your child, your young adult child, for the road ahead, for the exciting, challenging, uncertain, and rewarding road ahead. 
I look forward to beginning that journey with all of you today. Thank you again for being here. Congratulations again, and welcome to the UVA family. Now I think Tab is going to answer your questions. Tab? She's gone. All right, you have me. That's it. All right. I can't really I see, so. I'm not on. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, I'm up here in the oh, middle. Hi. Good afternoon, President hi. Ryan. I'm going to start by combining two different questions for okay. you, so it's a, it's a multi-parter. President Ryan, you've done a tremendous job in making UVA a diverse community. What's the university doing to promote inclusion for our students? And also, will you continue to stick around to continue this effort? <laughs> um, unless you know something I don't. Um, so was this, was this a texted question? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna text my answer. Okay, I'll read it. Um, so, you know, I feel like inclusion is, is multifaceted and it has to do with just about every aspect of the university, from what food is served to what holidays are celebrated. Um, and it takes everyone. And when I said earlier that one of the magical things about this place is that there's a place for everyone, it's really true. There are over 700 student-led organizations. For any interest that anyone has, you are gonna find others um, who share that interest. It is also, I will tell you, and I've been in other academic communities, one of the most welcoming and kind communities you will find anywhere. That's true of your fellow students, it's true of the staff, and it's also true um, of the faculty. Um, and I don't have any plans to go anywhere anytime soon, but I'm a little bit nervous by that <laughs> question. <laughs> Okay, this is actually related to that point. We're gonna dive a little deeper. We've heard that everything at UVA is competitive. Students have to apply to be in clubs or majors. And my student is nervous about finding her way. What can she do to get involved in her interests? So some things do um, require an application, both clubs and majors. Um, and sometimes the competition can be fierce. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Um, if it's something that you're interested, all I can say is give it a shot and give it your best shot. Uh, but there's also plenty to do here that does not require any kind of additional application. Uh, so even if something that you're interested in doing requires some kind of application or there's a competition um, and you don't get in, you will definitely find some other avenue for your interests. I was just talking to the acapella group before, speaking of something that you have to compete for. When I was in college, for reasons I still can't um, fathom, I tried out for an acapella group. I say, I say I can't fathom it because I can't sing, um, but I tried out nonetheless, and lo and behold, well, you both try out and then they take you out to lunch. Um, and I learned that I was really good at lunch, but I was not very good at singing. Um, I also tried crew. Um, and I'm not that tall now. I was five inches shorter when I started college. Um, and I learned, to my surprise, which should not have been a surprise, um, that my only role would have been a coxswain, which is the stroke, stroke person and steer the boat. I, I'm not good at steering, it turns out. Um, so that didn't work out. And I eventually found rugby. Now, at the time, I think rugby has become more competitive. They, the rugby team would take everyone. Um, but I fell in love with it, and it became a passion of mine in college. And that's why I say I think college is a time to explore. You may come here as a student um, thinking that you're absolutely interested in X, Y, and Z, and you may try A and discover that you absolutely love A. I would not have set in stone the path that you think you're going to follow, but explore a bit. So you've talked about the multitude of um, opportunities available to students. This question is, what's one quintessential UVA experience you think every student should have? Hmm. I'm trying not to say streaking the lawn. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not going to say that. Um, 
Boy, there are so many. I mean, from, from lighting the lawn to going to Rotunda Sings to going to a basketball game or a football game to enjoying the outdoors and um, going on a hike to, what's the humpback, humpback rocks? Um, to, I mean, you've already heard this and you'll hear it like a thousand times, Bodo's Bagels. I mean, you really, that, that is a quintessential UVA moment. Um, but that's the other thing. I think with 700 different clubs, um, there are a lot of quintessential moments um, that are defined by someone's interest. What's the highlight of your average week at UVA? Spending time with students. Um, I try as much as I can um, to spend time with students, uh, and that might be um, on a run on a morning, uh, or it might be at lunch uh, on the lawn, or it might be meeting with student leaders. Uh, I'm teaching a first year seminar, so it might be with my class. Um, it reminds you why you're doing this. Uh, and I think the students at UVA are honestly second to none. Um, and I learn something every time I spend time with them. So I wasn't going to ask you this one, but you just walked right into it. Where can I find Jim on grounds? <laughs> Will he be available? Um, well, if we could put some parameters on time <laughs> of day, I'm happy to tell you. Um, I am either in Madison Hall, um, which is right across from the rotunda, um, but I'm often out and about, uh, like I said, um, on a run or at lunch. Um, or visiting schools, um, or honestly, just walking around. This job requires a decent amount of travel, so sometimes I'm on the road, um, but when I am in town, which is the bulk of the time, um, that's where uh, you would find me. Okay, I'm getting the nod that I get to ask you one more question from this list. What President Ryan just told us was amazing, and our daughter will not listen to us. Will he or someone else repeat it for our students at some point? I'm a fan of repetition, so sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm told that that was the last question that I have a chance to ask you. All right, well, thanks again, everyone, for coming.